Um, my name is Fernando Perry. I'm the director of the Ivy and the club at the Ivy. Um, my first choice is any one of the series of uh, Namphia paintings by Monet, which are housed in the orangery of the Tuileries Gardens in uh, Paris, so sort of part of the Louvre. Um, I lived in Paris in the 80s, and uh, I went to that exhibition by chance, aged about 21 maybe, um, and walked into this oval room for which the paintings had been created. I don't know whether you know, they were the last paintings that um, Monet ever painted. Um, and he didn't allow them to be shown until his death. And this space was waiting for these paintings. So it's like this beautiful art mausoleum. And uh, the, the paintings just make you feel so calm and in tune with nature. Um, these lilies are just huge. They're much bigger than they are in real life. Um, and, and there are these wonderful stone benches or marble, whatever they are, and you sit there and look at these paintings. And that was the first time, I think, that I was completely overwhelmed by the art in front of me. And it gave me a special feeling, which I get when I sit in front of art that I really love. So that's one of the reasons that I've chosen it. And then the other reason is that, that for me, really, that is the apotheosis of, of painting technique. You know, the fact that, that, that with these very impressionistic mm -hmm. brush strokes, he was able to, to, to generate an image which is also so realistic in, in another respect. So, so for me, it's like the pinnacle of painting. Um, my second piece is, it could be any one of a number of paintings, but from a particular era of, of Piet Mondrian's painting. Because he was an artist who, uh, who painted the way that, you know, naturally, the way that things looked. He, uh, there are paintings that he did in his 20s of trees, and they looked like trees. But eventually, he, he distilled everything to just lines and colors. Um, you know, black lines, which, well, they started gray. They didn't, they didn't even go to the edge of the page. But by the 1930s, Mondrian was painting what has become the iconic uh, works that he's um, associated with. You know, the, the straight black lines and the big uh, oblongs and squares of um, very, very bright red and yellow. Um, the white is painted. A lot of people think that, that, that white's not painted. It's just empty. It's, it's not. You've got to go and have a look at these paintings, which are much smaller than you think they're going to be. Um, to, to see that he actually painted everything. He painted the black stripes, he painted the white and, and the red and the yellow. Um, for me, those paintings are, uh, you know, they, they, they come at a critical point in art when it goes from realistic, like Monet was, to completely abstract. Um, so I, I like that. I like the fact that he has such a strong signature. Um, which every great artist needs to have. You know, as soon as you see one of those, you know it's Mondrian. Um, I once saw a documentary about uh, jazz, and they showed Mondrian's paintings. And whoever it was that was directing it, the you know, art director or whatever, actually moved the lines and the colours, uh, depending on which notes were being played on a trumpet. And that made sense to me, that the, the same time that jazz was becoming so modern, um, or the music that you know, what was there, probably blues music, turned into this modern jazz, kind of coincides with that type of painting. And I see the red and the yellow now as a kind of um, and I rather like that. To conclude, well, um, I think it's important always to have something contemporary um, by a living artist um, in your collection. And the artist I would choose is Jason Schulman. Um, I, was told by a friend that I should go to see his studio. Um, he's a very shy, quiet man. He'd never invited me to his studio, although I'd known him for an awfully long time. And so one day I, I said, look, I'd like to come and see your studio. And I was absolutely overwhelmed by his work. It was brilliant. It's, a, it's, it's conceptual art, but it's very, uh, very, very beautifully crafted. And, and there's painting involved. And when, when there's painting involved, it's very beautifully done. Um, it's not just a one-trick pony, uh, funny joke that gets repeated many times, like a lot of conceptual art, to my way of seeing things is. Um, 
And Jason plays with ideas and, and perceptions. So your perception of, of light and space, your perception of weight, for example. Um, and the painting that I would choose, it is a painting, um, but it's also an, an object. It's a light bulb mm -hmm. hanging on a rod in front of a black background. And uh, the light bulb comes on or off depending on the intensity of light that's coming into the space. Um, when it comes on, what you see, what you think you see, is a light bulb and its reflection on a black background. But as you probably know, if you put a light bulb on in front of a dark background, what you're going to see is a spot, a small spot of light behind the light bulb, at most, a sort of glow. And here what you have is a kind of burst of light. Um, when the light goes out, like when it, so it's, when it starts to become brighter outside, the light goes out, then all of a sudden you can see that it's a trick and actually the uh, reflection of the, the light is just painted with, with spray paint, very, very, very finely done on a painted black background. So that piece for me would be connecting me with now, making me think about science um, and how art and science aren't necessarily uh, opposing poles as I thought they were when I was a 12-year-old boy, I think. Hi, I'm Tom Tomasi and welcome to our channel. I hope you like my art haven and if you do, please comment and share and, and please subscribe. And if you'd like to take part and give us your three wonderful works of art that you love in your living room, uh, please drop us a line. Thanks so much. Bye.